we did pray. Yeah, as we, we, we prayed. Were I won't do that already. He already heard us. So yeah, we prayed. <laughs> so let me start with uh, reading from Acts chapter one, verses twelve through fourteen. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And I was just pointing out that the, the focus that we have is the join together. They all join together. And we just want to bring that back to us as a family and as a husband and wife in the importance of a common goal and joining together. And that's kind of what our subject is and what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so basically to go back quickly to that story, it was after Jesus' resurrection from the death. We know Jesus was crucified. He rose again um, and he was he was ascended into heaven. And when he left, he told his disciples exactly. He gave them instructions. Go to the upper room and wait until the Holy Spirit come. When Holy Spirit comes into our lives, he gives us everything. He gives us anointing. He gives us direction. He gives us wisdom. Um, he gives us what we need to fulfill what the Lord has called us to do. So Jesus speaks to them and tells them what to do, and then they do it. The Bible says... Um, he they speaks, they hear. They hear. <laughs> and then they do. And they do. Yeah. And the Bible says they were in one accord. So they were together in unity of purpose. And the purpose was to wait for Holy Spirit so that they could spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's our main mission as Christians is to spread the love of God through Christ our Lord um, as the savior of all of us. So that's what happened. Um, they were there, they were waiting, and they did what they were instructed to do. And we are talking about the power that comes with a common purpose. common purpose. What happened is, as they continued to pray, just following what the Lord had, had led them um, to do, Holy Spirit came upon them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they were worshiping and praying and thanking God. And as people were watching and seeing what was happening, so many people came to the Lord and got saved and got under to the church and the church was growing. And so the purpose of those, these scriptures today is, is how do we translate this to our lives? Having that common purpose, mm -hmm. how do we translate that to our lives today as a couple, which is a big theme of and, it, and it's so important, especially in a Western culture where here in the United States, where we're so individualistic, um, it's all about who we are individually. And we're not discounting that. Mm -hmm. uh, we are two that become one. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're not half of half. Yeah. We're two whole people yeah. that come together as one. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important to point out because we yeah. don't ever want to diminish any anything of us individually, us individuals. but it's the power of us together. Yes, that we're talking us individuals. about. And, and even before we go so much into the community, yes, it's really important to be whole as a person. When you are whole, you can give more to a common goal with somebody else. So, um, yeah, one and, of the, uh, huge because we, you know, we, we know what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And we want, we're eager yeah. to, to go out and do. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it's like telling someone to go run a race, but they're not healthy or they haven't trained yet. So they're they're, they're not able to do that. Yes. And yes, they may be able to finish it, but they won't be able to do it 
uh, to the best of their the ability best. or mm -hmm. be as effective as they, they could be. And really, that's what wholeness is about, it, yeah. is, is really being in that place where God can really uh, put you to a use that mm -hmm. is fully effective and glorifying of him. Amen. And wholeness doesn't mean being perfect. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. you never make a mistake or you are perfect in every way. It doesn't mean that wholeness is the ability to be the best of who God made you to be. It's the ability to be healed from brokenness. We get broken in life mm -hmm. and there's a lot of brokenness. And a lot of times when people get broken in life, let's say it's a marriage that doesn't go well. We've both experienced that. Mm -hmm. It destroys people and people can and live and families yeah. and people can live with that pain for the rest of their lives. It That thing that didn't go well, oftentimes it does define many people's lives. It becomes what leads them into their future. Yeah. Wholeness is the ability to move from that, what went wrong, and having the resilience to recover from it and still pursue your dreams, become who God made you to be. Because these things happen to us. We go through bad things. Bad things happen to us. We make bad choices because we are human. Mm -hmm. But we don't live there. You, you dust yourself and you move forward into who God called you to be. Wholeness brings fulfillment of heart. It brings satisfaction um, of the heart. And that's what wholeness is. It, it doesn't mean yeah. you never make a mistake. It means that you are living in the abundance of all of who you are. It's really setting yourself up, putting yourself into a position of um, going forward. Mm -hmm. it, uh, what is meant for evil, God will turn to good. Turns, well, amen. if we're whole, amen. he can Hallelujah. use us to do Thank that. You, Jesus. And, Thank you, Jesus. But if we're not, and we're chained to this thing that has happened to us, mm -hmm. we're not allowing God then to use us To that use way. it, yeah. yeah. What was meant that. for evil, mm -hmm. God can use it for good. So it doesn't matter what has happened in your life, where you have been, what the devil meant for evil, because all those bad things, they come from the enemy. There is no bad thing that comes from God. So what the enemy meant for evil, God turns it for good. Yeah. When we allow him, when we give ourselves to him. So um, so going the, to the back to what um, Steve said about you don't lose yourself to a common purpose. You all, you know, in my mm -hmm. book, um, Become unbreakable and unstoppable it is a book i love and it's a wonderful book yes the people <laughs> people that have read this book you know they, they they say wonderful things about it and the things that they read in it so one of the things that i have written about um is don't lose your identity in relationships you never lose you know um uh, quite a few people actually have referenced to this subject. Never lose your identity because what happens is when people get married and they are not whole, or there is um, a deception where people think now when you become married, you become one, which is technically true. The Bible says where when two uh, join together in marriage, they become whole. You know, Steve, you are saying earlier, one plus one is one. When you become married, it's a one plus a one, and they make a one. However, you are still individuals. So you never, so what happens is sometimes people get married and they think that now I'm supposed to extinguish all of who I was so that I can fit in with him or with her. A lot of times it's the women that distinguish all of who they are and they want to support the husband and and uh, and all that and we will be talking about all these things they couldn't fit in one um podcast but um what i was saying is um don't lose your identity don't lose your identity as an individual in a relationship because what happens and being a chaplain of many years um 
I hear this a lot. Being a chaplain, being a counselor is where um, is where people become very resentful. People become resentful um, because all of a sudden you lose who you are and you support the other person, but there is still the who you are um, as a person and the who you are as a person still craves to be the who you are as a person. So when you lose yourself, all of a sudden, there's something in you that starts to say, well, I feel overlooked. Well, I feel unnoticed. Well, but you are the one giving yourself away, but yet you feel overlooked, you feel unnoticed, and people become very, very resentful. Um, and they, and so you don't want to become resentful. You always want to maintain your identity within the relationship, within the common goal. Always know who you are as an individual. The stronger you are in your identity, the better you are in a relationship, in a common goal, um, in, in a common purpose. Yeah, and I, I think um, so we talk so much about these things and, and we have so much in common in our lives. But uh, so when Ann was talking about as a chaplain and it's easy because we, we, but as a specifically a hospice chaplain, mm -hmm. we're dealing with people generally mm -hmm. that are older and End have lived life. their life. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they've really raised their family. Their yeah. family is now out raising their own families. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of where you get into you know, I gave so much. Yes. I gave so much up of me. Yeah. For. For. And, and that's the mistake that that you hear mm -hmm. in people now. But what we really want to address is, yes, that you don't want to be that at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, address that here at the beginning because you don't right. want to have regrets at the end. At the end. And plus, all those years in between will be so much richer, better, richer, deeper, better, yes. happier, you know, Instead of living, feeling like a burden, I, I have to, I feel burdened. Um, you can live with more joy when your identity is fulfilled within your marriage as an individual. So we don't want to diminish the power of being who you are as an individual as you enter into a common goal. So keep that in mind and check out this book if you haven't. It's, it's beautiful. Um, become whole, unbreakable, and unstoppable. Because things happen in life. But mm -hmm. you can live your life so that you can you are able to bounce back when those things yeah, happen. Yeah, and unfortunately, sometimes the church or us as Christians, um, not, not on purpose, mm -hmm. but mistakenly hold those things. We're the, actually the vessel that's mm -hmm. being used to hold people down because of those things. Yeah, the you know, because we know that yeah, you're supposed to do certain things, and mm -hmm. this is the the way we should be. Mm -hmm. And uh, but we always have to reflect back and look at ourselves. Yeah, and um, you know things do happen mm -hmm. in life, and mm -hmm. uh, are we gonna let that be the thing that holds us down? Yeah, holds us down. Or, or if people that... don't accept you. Don't stop at that. Right. You accept yourself, you love yourself, and you still keep pushing forward for the dreams that the Lord has placed in your heart. Mm -hmm. Don't wait until people accept you. Yeah. Because if you wait until people accept you, you could live the rest of your life and never be fulfilled and never fulfill your purpose. If you wait for everyone, you will. <laughs> you will. So start CBM, where you are. And the other, the other part of that was just, um, and I lost a train of track. <laughs> so anyway, anyway translating back to the now the common purpose so they were there they prayed and they saw the results of being together in unity the church was increasing the church was growing we still have the same mission that they were given as believers in christ mm -hmm. is the mission to uh, spread the gospel of jesus christ his saving grace, the love of God um, to all nations. So we still have the same uh, purpose. That's the common goal of every believer. Mm -hmm. But the, going back to 
starting from marriage, the common goal as a married couple. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking about, you know, when you are a couple, find what your common goal is. Other than raising your children, which is a huge goal that is common. But that by itself can be, it, doesn't it can lead sustain. to what we talked about earlier. Yeah. Of, yeah. Uh, of regrets. Regrets. If that's your only focus, if, if that's your only goal, because, you know, one day your, your children are going to grow up and be out of the quickly. house. Very <laughs> quickly. About very 20 quickly. years. And it goes by like 20 two years. years. And <laughs> your kids are grown. They have yep. their own lives. And then you're looking at each other like, who are you? You know, you're strangers. And you look at yourself and go, I don't know, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> so we were talking about how, you know, especially women get very caught up in raising the children. The men are out here in the side wondering, uh, what's my place? What's my role? Where do I belong? And, you know, a lot of times um, the there isn't that commonality. The, the women get very, very engraved in their children and um, raising them. And they lose each other mm -hmm. as a couple in the process. And we don't, I just want to point out that we're generalizing. You know, we, we know there's always exceptions. Yeah. Um, and that's that's fine. But, but certainly we can group people together. And mm. women generally take that role. Women generally, yeah. yeah. And I think that's there's a reason for it. So <laughs> that's God why aren't women yes. as the nurturing, mm -hmm. you know, signed of a family. Mm -hmm. But here is the thing where there's so many people who stay together, they stay married for the sake of the children. Even they lose each other. The man feels like I don't matter anymore. In a lot of marriages, and we, we, we deal with people, we are counselors, we deal with people all the time. So we hear these things from many, many, many people. The men are feeling like they don't matter. The woman, a lot of times, they are caught up so much in the world of children that it's their world. And even the men, they are also caught up in their children. And so they are both looking from here into their children. And they are not looking as a couple together in the same way. And then when the kids grow, what do we see? There's a lot of marriages that end once the last child is out of the house. Mm -hmm. And people, you know, people are left surprised. What happened? You guys stayed together all these years, but there was no common purpose. Mm -hmm. So um even outside of raising your children, it's important to find other common goals that you are excited about together. Yeah, and it always, it starts with conversation. Mm -hmm. it, it talks about just, just as we talk about things. And one of the things uh, when you first met, what were those things that you found attractive? I mean, what drew you to each other? Mm -hmm. And and I can think leading to our own goals is what would we do and we would sit there you know sometimes on the phone yeah. for hours and hours talking mm -hmm. about what do you know where i'm going with this or uh oh we're in trouble now <laughs> well ministry and psychology counseling yeah. mm -hmm. those two subjects uh were the things that we just we could sit for hours mm -hmm. and hours and hours and look at that and go oh my goodness that yeah <laughs> where'd the time go where did that time yeah go? and uh so that's you know, leading to the goal, one of the shared goals that we have as, mm -hmm. as a couple and a family. Yeah, it's ministry. Mm -hmm. um, and what that does too is, you know, I'm, one of the things that uh, that Steve and I found very easily, uh, we, we really both very individually were praying for a partner, for a, a spouse mm -hmm. in life. And we were both very specific. And we truly believe that the Lord brought us together because we found the intimacy of heart very, very easily and, and very quickly um, uh, once we met, we, we, there was intimacy. And it's such a common um, desire of ours is to encourage families to find intimacy. Yeah. Well, and, I think we live in a culture that is the opposite, that mm -hmm. opposes intimacy. Yes. Um, go 
be friendly to everyone. Yeah. On the surface. On the surface. And not and again, so many of these things. And, and what what is the intent is to take mm -hmm. good things and tear mm -hmm. down, right? Yeah. That's not our intent here. It's good. You you need to show uh, you know, Christ's love in mm -hmm. everything as you're talking to other people, be friendly, have those relationships. Uh, you know, there there is room for close intimate relationships with a husband and a wife. Mm -hmm. And you have, you know, friendships that you're more social and you don't, you know, really get. But truly, as as I see it growing up in, in the U.S., mm -hmm. intimacy and relationships have disappeared yeah. uh, more and more. If I look back by 10 years, by 10 years, by 10 years, and it's not necessarily by my age as I grow, mm -hmm. but when I look at other people around as well, is it's more of a social acquaintance mm -hmm. and you don't really get the depth. And anyone that knows us, that's that's what we're about mm -hmm. is, you know, I want to sit and have a, a really deep, wonderful conversation that has some some meaning. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and I was going to follow up to say that the intimacy we are talking about is you develop intimacy is that ability to connect heart to heart. That's what intimacy is about. It's the ability. I, again, in this book, I talk about intimacy. Um, I was talking with somebody who read my book recently, and they were telling me, I never thought of intimacy that way. And that person is asking me for copies of this book because they were like, that really opened up something for me to think about because I never... I thought of intimacy only in one way. I never thought of intimacy this way. This is really rich. And intimacy is that heart-to-heart -heart connection. That's the type of intimacy that we preach. Can you hear us? One second. Yes? Now you can. Okay, All right. wonderful. Sorry about that technology. How long has that been? Well, we were talking about intimacy. Yeah. And the power of it. And just to share, you know, the testimony that we have seen, um, what this does for a relationship um, between a couple and within the family is having your children trust you, having that very trusting relationship together. So when where there is intimacy, there is trust, and there is also ability to be vulnerable. A lot of people are afraid to be vulnerable because 
we are we are so broken we have been so hurt and we so have been hurt. so yeah. broken and we cannot be vulnerable anymore because we have to protect ourselves what intimacy does is it provides that place to be able to be vulnerable and when you can be vulnerable somewhere you continue to be healed you continue to grow you continue to develop so we really advocate for that intimacy so and in finding common goal, common purpose, there has to be that level of trust and um, in the common purpose. So as a couple, you know, we have found ministry, mm -hmm. ministry to people, marriages, encouraging marriages to solve issues that come in between. Um, sometimes we can think, leaving the marriage is the easier solution but then many people leave and then they come back and they realize wow it didn't get any better after leaving yeah i, I can't tell you how many people yeah that i've heard that from that they actually left mm -hmm. uh either separated or did get a divorce mm -hmm. and then two years down the road a year down the road mm -hmm. go what did i do what did i do you now know i'm having just as many issues. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, look what I've lost. You've lost so much. Yeah, and uh, you, you know, oftentimes if you have children, mm -hmm. that's already affected. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's why we just really we're passionate about that. Yeah, and, we're and very advocate. passionate. And it it all starts. Yes, the common goal and everything, but having the intentionality from the very get go. Mm -hmm. So and that that is something uh, you know commitment. Being very intentional, um, yeah, and, and this thing, the, the Bible, keeping this the center of your marriage because there's a lot of humanistic view mm -hmm. of what a marriage should be. A marriage should be between a man and a wife. There is nobody else involved in a marriage. There is two people. And then, you know, we go to everybody else outside of there but if you don't follow the bible as the model for your marriage it's complete confusion because there is everybody coming up with theories and they, mm -hmm. they come up with the theories and then they come back and say oh that doesn't work <laughs> oops we were wrong you know yeah and not to be anti-theory mm -hmm. but that is only our human attempts to try to explain why things happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there, there are good theories. They, are I good mean, theories. They, 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 you know, you can see the effects of them, but when you put your trust in them, in them, that's where we go wrong. Let's say when you find mm -hmm. those theories, check them out with the word of God. Mm -hmm. Everything that the psychology comes up with, the science comes up with, the number one thing is God is the greatest psychologist. God is the greatest um, scientist. God is the greatest physician. God is the greatest everything. Of course he is. So, yes. <laughs> so whatever there is, whatever things that come up, go to your word. Go to the word of God and check it along and mm -hmm. say, does the, how does this fit in the word of God? If it is not fitting and if it is the opposite trust me it is it is gonna destroy you and they'll come back and say whoops it didn't work because nothing that goes against the word of god stands it's just a matter of time and it, these things have been proven over and over and well think of it yeah how many times has even science been proven wrong over yeah time? yeah and science uh, and psychology are the biggest you know that and and don't get us wrong we believe in science we, we believe in psychology it's you know it's what you put your trust in mm -hmm. though when you put those things above the bible the, word of, the god. word of god that's the mistake that's the because mistake. you know there are camps um and there's still people that, that look at that way as psychology and and the bible are opposites it's like you can't they, they you can't do one or the other mm -hmm. and it's like no and, and so some people will will say no psychology i'm a christian and that psychology no no that's no good yeah and no we, we very much are in support of the two being bridged together yeah like 
uh, Anne said, you know, who is the greatest psychologist? It's God. It's God. Uh, he, he created us. Mm -hmm. So certainly he knows how we work. Yep. And but when you look at it through the view of the Bible mm -hmm. and then you look at, at the theories and, and counseling and then you can start to be more aware of where these are, are coming from mm -hmm. and why. Yeah, this works fine in certain situations and that might work. But but when you look back on the Bible and say, oh, wait a minute, mm -hmm. <laughs> wait a minute. Mm -hmm. That's throughout the discipline of our children and and become their best friends that yeah, back proven. in what the 70s the it doesn't movement, work right? that way yeah the bible says this if you love your child you discipline them anything that comes up that is against but, the word of god it brings destruction and then what 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 does the world then come against is yeah they'll come up some people abuse their children yeah that is wrong one person in i don't know what right I, it know. doesn't matter it doesn't but Whatever then, that number might be. Yeah, but then the media brings that really, really. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, this is happening. And now we make a theory out of this minute um, st statistics. Mm -hmm. And now we stop everything that was working because of this. And you brought the word, the, the word statistics into the conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's always, everyone knows, statistics are whatever you want them to, to mean. Yeah. And it truly is. And in science I mean, in general, exactly. even you you hear so many people reference in this study, in this study, and it's scientific. Well, don't take the word of a study was done. Go read the study. And then read because studies, the word of God. <laughs> yes. And because people are biased. We're biased mm -hmm. in our choices and decisions, mm -hmm. even as we do studies even if we don't think we are. Mm -hmm. And you can make it as sterile as possible, but there's still biases. I, bias. I'm under the, the 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 thought that you cannot have completely sterile research. Yeah, You're always going to have something bias. in there, some bias. And as little as it might be, might claim, or as big, um, it's, it's to me, it's nearly impossible to get away from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and anyway. we live in a world that, you know, that we have so much to do. Mm -hmm. We want to just say, oh, a study said it. Okay, we're done. We're, we're taking done. that for, for That's true. That's study. So <laughs> let's, let's make that our... But, yeah, and the problem is you can go find studies that contradict each other. They do. Oh, there's you so know, many you, of them out there that contradict each other, so you, which you is why, again, we go back to the word of God. I, in, in the years that I have lived you know, putting my trust in God's word and I continue to grow in it. We continue to press forward and to learn and to grow in it. But in the years that I have put my trust in the word of God, it has never disappointed me. And it never will. And and it <laughs> never will because God spoke it and he is God. So the thing is, every time um, I hear something that is in contradictory to the Bible, I pray and Sometimes I feel like I'm one, like I'm this fish going the opposite direction because almost everybody else is going that direction where... Oh, I feel like I see a chosen fame. thing coming up. Now. You know, yeah. <laughs> there is so much fame. There is so much, oh, everybody is going that direction. That must be the right direction. And, I'm, you know, I'm like, no, that's not the right direction. You know, this is what the word of God says. And... And oftentimes I've watched things, you know, you just see destruction because we are so prone to following what we are being told instead of well, people are, are sheep. Yeah, yeah. Instead of reading what the word of God says and standing with it, even if you are alone and you stand on the word of God, God will be with you and he will bless you. And sometimes you know, it's easy for people to look around and say, wow, this person doesn't seem like like they go through the pain people go through, or this person seems like they are blessed. It, it's because you follow the Bible principles. You, you don't follow the crowds. You know, the crowds, you can go into destruction by following mm -hmm. crowds, but always ask yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing? But anyway, back to the purpose. Common purpose. When a husband and wife have a common purpose, 
they are bound to find more joy in their relationship, more joy, more happiness in their relationship, which makes it exciting. Why do people go outside of their marriage? Oh, I'm going to go hang out with my friends because I'm so tired of my husband or I'm so tired of my wife. I'm going and it's good to have friends. We're not discounting okay. that. Very good to have friends. But if you are always looking forward to get away from your spouse, there is a problem. Mm -hmm. So find, the, find those common purposes that you are excited to talk with each other about. Because the more time you are excited about spending together, that's the key thing, is being excited to spend time together. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, we've been blessed because anytime we are together, we can talk and talk and talk because we have so many things in common. Um, whether it's from education, we, we, we major in the same lines of education. Now we are both chaplains and we ministry together and um, we love to study. We, we, lo we love, love, love to study together, um, do ministry together. The more things that excite you together, the more you grow together. I think... Uh along those lines when you have that common goal those those common things that you do together that excite you it's because what what happens when you're working on a common goal mm -hmm. we're creative beings yeah so together we're always trying to create yeah and, and so we're seeking yeah we're seeking those things and actively when you have that common goal mm -hmm. you know i'm not doing my thing here and she's doing her it's when it's common mm -hmm. we're, we're creative yeah along the same lines yeah, so, so we we're looking this? for that yeah even though we as two individuals mm -hmm. we come at it mm -hmm. a little different because we have different uh, different talents gifts, gifts. Mm -hmm. and but but it's that weaving together that excitement of yeah. creativity mm -hmm. that you know god uses and yeah. and to me it's all about doing that and just putting ourselves in that best position for him to do that so yeah as a couple and so that will keep your relationship exciting. It will it will keep you excited to be together, to see each other, to spend more time together instead of feeling like you're wearing each other out. When you find common purpose, it, it, it keeps your excitement together, which even after raising kids or no matter you go to work, you're looking forward to seeing each other so that you can talk about those things that you have. You just took the one I was going to say. I, I can't tell you how many times during the day that something will come to my mind that that is ministry related, mm -hmm. uh, the, the different things that we do yeah. in our lives that I go, I can't wait to get home. And sometimes I can't and I have to call you. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> it's those things because now you're, you're just excited to go see my, I got to go see my wife. I got to mm -hmm. talk to her. We got to talk about yeah. this. And, and that know? is our lifestyle. That, yeah. That's how mm -hmm. life works. And that's how the relationship grows mm -hmm. stronger instead of growing apart. You know, our goal is to, to encourage you that marriages can be indeed fun. They can be fun. They can be rich. Families can be fun. They can be rich. And the same lifestyle that you live as a couple, then you 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 pass it on to the kids where they can trust coming to you. You're also raising them for a rich future when they become adults and they have their families. You are coaching them how to do it. Um, the, the more you can find that common purpose as a couple. And then, you know, you go to the family, you know, you have a common purpose as a family what is it that excites your family together you know and it's it's just really fun because even uh steve and i but we have nate and sally in the house and it's like we don't get tired of each other we we love hanging out together because we have so many things that we are doing together as a family whether it's writing we love writing we love they're, they're just different things that we do together um as a family that are always keeping us excited as a family. So finding those common purposes as a family, as a household, as a couple, keeps you growing together. And then you go to the church, it's the same. You know, find whether it's a church, when you have common, common goals, common purpose, it keeps people together. It keeps people excited together because 
What makes people wander away is to look for excitement. So if you can find the excitement within your relationships by finding a common purpose, what is it that we are excited to do together? It will, and how do you seek it? Um, again, Jeremiah 29, um, how do you find that? Um, yeah, Jeremiah 29, uh, verses uh, 11 through 14, I'll do. Um, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Amen. When you seek me with the whole of your heart, when you seek God with the whole of your heart. And, when and again, that's an intimacy. Thing. It's an intimacy <laughs> thing. You become intimate with God. But what did we see them do in Acts? They were together in one accord, mm -hmm. in prayer. So, and they found him. They were seeking him and Holy Spirit came and their purpose was fulfilled in a very rich way. So they showed us how to do it. God says, if we seek him, because when, when God speaks to you and says, do this and you do it, he is with it. It is him doing it through you. So we are encouraging you to seek the Lord. And then when you hear the voice of God, yield to it. I have written another book that I'm uh, working on correcting some things and putting it back in the shelf, knowing and yielding to the voice that counts. There is so much power in hearing that voice of God, knowing how to hear it, and then more important is yielding to it. Because sometimes we hear it, but we do not want to yield to it because it doesn't make sense to us. So you have to follow it with the yielding. And so we seek the Lord. He gives us the purpose. Go to the upper room and wait. Pray until the Holy Spirit comes. When we hear that, it may not make sense. Eh? What does that mean? Go to the upper room and wait and pray. That makes no sense. Yeah, and how are we wired as, as human beings? We want to make sense out of everything. Everything. But we got to remember his ways are above our ways. Is, yeah, they you are know, above our ways. So, trust. Independence. Trust. Go do what God puts, you know, seek him and then do what he tells you to do and find that common purpose so that you can grow strong. Yeah. And I, I think for me anyway, uh, in, in ministering to people, it's the intimacy and the, it's that it's that heart thing that really heals because God heals through that heart mm -hmm. connection, not through the cognitive thinking part. I mean, he gave us brains mm -hmm. to figure things out and, and, and things. And but. The context of what we put that in again god is always on top yeah and we see around us the, mm -hmm. the culture is really high on our brains and, yes. and what we can figure out and mm -hmm. as as wonderful uh as god has created us it isn't here it's here yep and yes there's a connection <laughs> yes <laughs> but yes. the focus the center the focus is here is here yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. and that's one of the things i know we need to wrap up i'll, I'll I'll let that go for another time. I was just saying, what, when I first got into chaplaincy, mm -hmm. one of the things that I looked at is I, I really wanted to discount myself. Mm -hmm. Once I got into chaplaincy, one of the biggest assets that I have, I didn't realize if someone would have told me that ahead of time, I, I would have made that connection. But and when you minister to people, it's really, do you have that ability to be vulnerable and connect with your heart? Mm -hmm. And, you know, my wife oftentimes says, you're going to be a great chap. Mm -hmm. and, and not that I was doubting her, mm -hmm. but the way she said it was such confidence. It's because she knows that part of me. Yes. And, yes, and uh, I didn't really understand it until mm -hmm. I started walking in those shoes. Go, And then I started looking at it and going, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's the ability to connect with people heart to heart. Yeah. Let me tell you, it's so easy. You know, I mean, they require education to get in these places. You've got to have a master's degree. You've got to have a CPE. You've got to have this. And all these things are amazing. But they're successful. And effective and useful. And useful. The successful <laughs> chaplains 
are those who are able to connect heart to heart with people. Because at the end of the day, people are not looking for how much you know. They are looking for how much you care. The people need people who truly care for them in their lives. And so, and just, uh, just you know, a, a really quick um, testimony, again, talking about the connection, you know, in my journey with racing Nate, with, uh, with extreme medical condition and the things that we have been through that we have talked about very openly, um, there are things that we will continue to share. Um, Nate is in absolute agreement. He is in college and sharing his life and what God has done through him, as well as Sally, who has been through it as a child and growing up in that environment. So we are a unique family in many ways, a very unique family in many ways. Um, but we have seen the power of God and God has been so faithful. He has blessed us more than we can uh, we can express because we live such a joyful life. Um, there is nothing richer than being joyful and peaceful. There is nothing richer than that. And we have found that in the Lord and we are thankful. Um, but I was just going to say, when we went to Mayo Clinic, um, to bring Nate there um, when things were hopeless. And we met his neurologist then. Now he's an adult, so he isn't with the same neurologist. But the, the neurologist that we met, I met her for the first time. And I shared the journey. And I shared what we have been through and where things are at when this other place said, we're done. There is nothing we can do anymore we're done. We don't know what else to do for your son. Nate was, I think, eight years old. And I was like, no, we're not done. That's that's not what the Lord is speaking to my heart. So we, we go to Mayo and the neurologist from the two, Twin Cities refers us there and says, you're going to meet a great person. And she was so great. And let me tell you what really caught my heart about her. Is that day I sat with her for probably a couple hours. It was the first time I met her. This woman, she listened to me with her heart. And I could feel her. And there was such a connection. I felt heard. She listened and I felt heard. She ministered through her heart. Now, note she is a, a um, neurologist. She's a neurologist. That is a high class hey, doctor <laughs> at Mayo Clinic. So she is very, very, very smart. She knows what she's doing. But it wasn't this that caught me, mm -hmm. it was her heart. I talked, she was compassionate, she listened with her heart, and I knew it. That day, I left that place going, it doesn't matter what happens. Today was a miracle. I left feeling that way. Today was a miracle. And I knew in my heart that I could trust. Right there, I knew that I could trust. And needless to say, it became an amazing, beautiful journey. Um, so um, my son, who was at the time given up, it was, yeah, we don't know what else to do. He's 20 years old and he's in college and he is sharing his life. But the reason I share that story is it doesn't matter how much education you get, which we love education. Um, we well, are both, and we need education. And I we mean, need education. it wouldn't have done much good to have that. And you're talking to someone that isn't able to help him. Who is not <laughs> able to help him. True. So we love education. Uh, we're both going for our doctorate. Uh, so I'm just saying that to say we do. We are. We don't discount discount education. 
we both love to learn and to grow. We love education. We believe in it. But it is not what we know that will capture people's hearts. It is how much we care for people. So, yeah. Yeah. amen. In that common purpose, let it be about um, caring for God's people and, and, you know, fighting shame. Those women who have been shamed for years and cast out even by the church, helping them realize that Jesus took the shame upon the cross with himself. Um, whatever it is, you know, different things that people are struggling with and feeling like they don't matter anymore. Let it be that God did it for them. And we reach out to them with the heart and bring them in, into the kingdom. Common purpose. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> you caught me daydreaming. Yes, You're talking sir. about women and the uh, and the uh, the shame and, and Jesus. And it just took me back to that scene in the Joseph with oh, Mary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With Mary. And yeah. Just the power. But there's an example right there of how Jesus ministers. Mm -hmm. And if we can put ourselves in that position where he can use us that way, it's wonderful. It is wonderful. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us. Join us again next week, Sunday, Sunday afternoon. We will be doing this Sunday afternoons um, about 3 p.m., but we oh. haven't put that for sure, but Sunday afternoons, we will continue to do this. So join us, um, share this message. Um, we have seen the Lord in such powerful ways, mighty ways, and we want to inspire your marriage. We want to inspire your family. We want to inspire your life. You can be all that God made you to be. It doesn't matter where you come from, what you have been through, what bad choices you've made in the past, what has happened to it doesn't matter where you have been. You can still be the best that God made you to be. God bless you. Have a very, very uh, productive week with the Lord. <laughs>